Okay, we are live. Obviously, you don't want to see the ceiling. So we're going to wait for people to show up because nobody knew about this live. I didn't even know about it. I have the computer in front of me, so we'll see if I can find this video so I can um, see what you guys are writing. Okay, so we have someone. Hello, hello. I'm just trying to pull up the video so I can see if... Uh, hello, hello. Oh, yes, so I'm doing my nails. I figured, you know, I'm going to do my nails. So I'm going to do... I'm going to show you in a second this but i'm going to film this so i'm sorry but it, it's going to be probably on the channel in probably a day or day probably i'm gonna really work hard on compare so i'm going to shape my nails and do a quick manicure and i misplaced my file somewhere ah it's right there all right this is kind of weird no can you guys see me properly hi from germany gonna zoom in a little bit okay all right so if you guys have any questions i can see What's going on? By the way, this I've liked these files for a long time, and I finally found. I noticed that my supplier carries this, so CND Kanga file. I like them because they are wooden boards and they're very thin, and they fit nicely on the sides. I really like them. They're one-time use only for clients, but I mean, if I use it on myself. Um, you can just spray them with alcohol or something and just reuse them. It's a little dark. Explain how to apply all types of nail polishes in salon at home. Explain how to apply all types of nail polishes. Uh, you know, I don't think there is a difference in application when it comes to uh, different brands. You just have to... A lot of it is practice. Hi from Australia. I'm kind of sideways, no? Can you guys see me properly? I don't know, it's weird, I don't know. Oh, maybe the way I set it up. That's so strange. Technology is sometimes a little confusing. Yeah, I don't know how to change that, that horizontal. I think it's one of the, it's the setup. Yeah, just turn the phone, guys. Sorry. I don't know why. I think it's just the way I set it up. Because I really didn't set it up. I just... Um, normally, I set it up for the, like for the future, ahead of time. And this time, I just went go live. So by the way, we're going to have the, the usual Q&A this evening. So don't, don't be uh, alarmed. It's just that I, I was doing my nails, so I figured I'm going to talk to you guys. Yeah, if you have these little hard pieces, see what you can do. Hard little pieces, not dry. Because if it's just dry, then filing it is not going to make it better. All right. I'm going to keep this nail. I know it sounds ridiculous. A little bit longer because I might uh, swatch. I might want to learn how to swatch things on my nails. 
it's not so easy. I mean, the swatching is easy. It's the uh, filming it is not very easy. Since I've done the oil bath, my nails are so much better. I find the nails in both directions will actually damage sensitive nails. No, it doesn't. Uh, first of all, the nails cannot be sensitive. They can be damaged, but the nails are dead, so the nails are not sensitive. But sometimes they feel sensitive because they're so thin, damaged, that you basically you feel the nail bed underneath. So that's what's sensitive. Sensitive is the nail bed underneath. Filing in both direction um, or in one direction has been debunked a while ago. And when you look at how the nail is actually made, it doesn't make sense filing, having to file in one direction only. So the nail is made of, let me just see if I can, okay, here. So the first 30% of the nail is made up of these little, just random shape little things like this, okay? Oh, can you see? Oopsie. Yeah, the top the top 30% of the nail. So there was no direction here. They're like, like this and like this. Okay, so this is the top 20%. The middle of the nail, the 50% in the middle, that middle layer is made actually up of um, a surface that's laid this way, actually, not this way. People think that the nail is made this way and then filing it this way opens up the nail somehow, but no. So this, the, the, the bottom, sorry, the middle portion of the nail is made of layers, like a cake layers, okay, this way. So filing in both ways is perfectly fine. And the other 20% of the nail, the bottom part is also made of these little like pancakes. So it doesn't really matter how you file the nail. What matters is the grit. So if you have a grit that's very uh, low grit, meaning let's say 100 is a low grit, 80 is even lower, um, then of course the end is going to be kind of sharp and uneven and not very nice. So that's why I usually recommend filing with like 180 grit or uh, 240, this is 240 grit. But if you have a hundred grit, you know, and you've used it for a while, it's going to be actually a little softer, so you can use it as well. But then once you file the nails, what you can do is uh, do this. Just use a soft buffer block. And then because the soft buffer block is going to almost hug the nail, right? So in case, file is going to be, hmm, how do I show you this? File is going to be make that edge of the nail more softer. So that's what you can do. And once you go like this, it's perfectly smooth. So again, I'm not buffing the top of the nail. Question, I only have two types of oils. Will I get the same results in the oil bath? Okay, but which type of oils do you have? The best, I mean, you will always get benefit, but the best are jojoba, really. I think jojoba is the best, and it's not actually an oil, it's a wax. So I would suggest for the, for the warm oil soaks to use jojoba. And then you can add other oils if you want, like a grapeseed oil, avocado oil. Grapeseed is very, very light. Yes. Um, oh, jojoba. So just use jojoba. That's perfectly fine. Avocado, you can actually then add some avocado to the oil and then just use it um, throughout the day. Oh, Lucy's here. Oh. Hi, Lucy. Just, I just decided to do a quick live because, because I can, doing my nails. So I figured I'm going to talk to you guys. And then uh, this evening we're going to do the Q&A. Can cuticle remover be used weekly? Yes, I recommend using it weekly. But you know, the thing is with cuticle remover is you really want to make sure that you don't leave it on the skin for too long either. Okay, guys, olive oil. So Justine, olive oil is not, not, not actually that great for the skin. It actually can damage the skin barrier. I've read a couple of really interesting articles about it. 
with some s studies mentioned that the olive oil can actually disrupt the skin barrier, so it's not recommended for skincare. So now I'm just nudging the skin fold. So that's not the cuticle, it's a skin fold. Yeah, so, yeah, almond oil is very good. But not for the warm oil soaks. For the warm oil soaks, you know what, just do the jojoba. Because jojoba penetrates between the, the little cells and it plasticizes the nail, so the nail does not it does not break it has it can um it can move without cracking oh thank you so much celine best nail channel on youtube the expertise thank you so much all right so the cuticle removal let me just grab a blue cross one second i'll be right back And I'm going to use this this little tool called Pushy from Tweezerman. I really like it. So these are my three favorite tools. I'm gonna to make a video about it. This one and the glass one. Okay. So this is how it goes. If you are a beginner, use this one only. If you're like intermediate, this is very good. I use it all the time. And then if you're a nail technician and if you're doing other people's nails, this is a very good idea too. So, because this one is very precise, it's quite sharp, but it's not too sharp. The problem with these ones is you can actually see that they chip very, very easily. Can you see? Here, there's a little chip. So that's the problem with, with these. So, uh, one drop, and as this is working, I'm gonna look at your questions, guys. So now we're gonna remove the cuticle. And the cuticle thing is so misunderstood, it's very, very sad. Okay, it's coconut oil a good option? Mm, it depends. Uh, it depends for what? It's good for the skin, yes, but to do the warm oil soak, for the purpose of plasticizing the nail plate? Not really, apparently. And yeah, I don't know, coconut oil is, I wouldn't recommend it by itself, especially. I know it's pretty famous, the coconut oil, but uh, I don't think so. Sunflower oil, yes, you could. I mean, sunflower, maybe it's a, it's a good replacement, but again, jojoba actually is not an oil, it's a wax. So, I know it's a little bit um, confusing because I call it a warm oil soaks, but it's really a wax. So I should be calling it warm wax soaks, but that sounds a little weird. Oh, David is here. Hello. We will, by the way, do the, the usual Q&A later on, but I just, I was doing my nails, so I figured that I will do a quick live. Have you seen the brand Bare Hands? I uh, love the shine, they advertise for natural nails, but since extremely da damaging despite the philosophy. Exactly, Alyssa, yeah. No, I think it's a very bad idea because if you're not adding anything to the nails, you're just removing, you're removing layers of your nails. And if you do that a few times, you can remove easily half of your nail plate. And the first 30% of the nail plate is your first, actually the nails are made up of three like layers, let's just say. There was more fibers, more layers, but the main areas of the nails are um, three layers. So the first layer is about 30% of the nail, and the second one is about 50% of the nail plate, and then the lower one is 20% those first two layers now it's it's some people say that the first layer is much more um, dense so it it helps protect the nail some say that middle layer also protects the nail as well um, but nonetheless you don't want to be removing these layers and if you are adding shine to your nails by taking away layers um, then you are, yeah, removing the, the layers. 
and they cannot regrow really I mean it regrows this way but it doesn't regrow from the bottom okay so normally I would and I will remove this with water because this is really really important I wanted to see if this is already working so let me just grab a little bit of water one second I'll be right back because I didn't get ready for this video whatsoever so I'm going to spray Because what you want to do is you want to moisture, uh, moisturize, oh my god, you want to neutralize this product. So what happens is because there is, oops, I like sprayed my computer, guys. This is not good. Um, the the alkaline, um, the product is very alkaline, and alkaline breaks the bonds between the the skin cells. So what happens is you don't want to be breaking the bonds between the nail as well, right? But the skin and the nails are made up a little differently. So the product first is going to break down the skin and then eventually it can break down the nail as well. Okay. Yeah, so David is talking about the, the that jojoba is a wax, which is correct. So now I'm removing the cuticle from the nail plate. But very often people think that this part that I just pushed back or nudged back is a cuticle and it's not. Does your channel have a video on how to do warm oil soak? Yes, it does. It does. And if you can just put in the search DIY, there is going to be a video called DIY treatment for brittle something nails. Very rough skin around the nails, the wraps, the nails on the sides to touch and firm. Is there, uh, is there a treatment to transform it to be softer? Yeah, probably they're hard is because maybe you're cutting it, right? So every time you injure the skin, the skin is going to try to protect itself. So it's going to be become harder. So the more you take care of that skin around the nails, the softer it's going to get. But initially, what you can do is very gently, try not to obviously overdo it. You wanna just do it very, very lightly. You don't wanna remove all the hard skin, but just smooth it, okay? And then just feel it. Does it feel smoother? Okay, that's enough. Go like this. Does it feel smoother? Don't try to remove everything. This is what you can do. And then use the carousel. Carousel has, has uh, urea, which is moisturizing, has salicylic acid, which is exfoliating. So you definitely wanna use the carousel. Um, you wanna use the carousel at night every day. Very, very small amount. You can use this to clean the nails a little bit. You know, the, the pushy, I have to say, I really like it. There's little skirts underneath, like little pieces. You can remove them at this point. You are very welcome, guys. Okay. Can the oil after the oil soak be removed, uh, used several times? You know what, it's, it's, personal decision right i would especially if it's jojoba jojoba is very heat stable but if the oil is rancid you're not getting any benefits from the oil so you know make sure that it still smells good okay so now this hand is done and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put some oil on this hand so normally i apply okay i'm going to show you how much oil i apply normally. A little drop, and this is enough for two hands, okay? But now, because I just use the cuticle remover, I just like to apply a little bit more and just rub it into the nail plate. Argan, I don't know, Argan is so, fan, like, it's so popular because there was so much marketing behind it. It's not any better than sunflower oil, so no, I wouldn't say 
best oils for cuticle oil. Okay, so uh, we're not doing, we're not really taking care of the cuticle because I just removed the cuticle, right? So the, the, the cuticle removal um, took care of the cuticle. So there was no more cuticle. I removed it. So what we are carrying is we're carrying for the skin around the nail. So the skin fold, but the whole skin around the nails and the nail. So it's a skin and nail oil. Can you guys even see me? I don't know. I'm a little fuzzy here. Like I'm seeing the video. So the best oils are also depends on your skin. So for everyday use, I would say some mixture of jojoba, I would say like 50% of jojoba. So just a little drop. And now without pushing more product out, I'm gonna put here. So it depends on your skin. So for example, I don't really have dry skin. So I like very light oil. I like sunflower oil, I like safflower, I like grapeseed oil. Because uh, skin, oily skin or skin that's not dry, is lacking sometimes different types of um, oils, right? So um, I like the light oils, but if your skin is dry, then maybe using something like the avocado, avocado oil is a, a good idea, even coconut oil, things like that. So you can, um, you can definitely mix your own oils and see what works best for you. Do you know of any good quality company that I can buy jojoba from? I'm in Canada, so I can either order from Amazon or come from natural health food store. You know what? Just talk to the, the, the health food stores or order from Amazon. I have links usually, but if you're in Canada, then you would have to order from um, the Amazon.ca, and I don't, I'm not sure if I have links to jojoba, but... Like the Bliss Kiss oil is expensive, but I go through it so slowly. Yeah, but for the warm oil soaks, I would say the Bliss Kiss, maybe it's not the best. Um, I would just use pure jojoba. Hi, Mercedes. Yeah, it's just like a quick, um, quick live because I was doing my nails and I figured I'm going to talk to you guys. And we're going to do the proper live, I mean, the usual Q&A earlier. Um, oh, my God, later. What is wrong with me today? It's Monday or something. Okay, so let's see if this is budging. By the way, I'm not doing these nails because I did them yesterday, haha. <laughs> I didn't have any product. Okay, so guys, this is the cuticle. So now what happens is the, uh, the cuticle remover is quite alkaline. And what it does, it breaks down the bonds between the skin cells so that the skin can lift. So it's very important not to try to put it here on, on this skin, because we're not trying to remove this skin. This is not a cuticle. This is skin around the nail. This is, and this is a skin fold. And so this is the front skin fold, so proximal nail fold, and these are lateral nail folds. So this, these are the side folds, and this is the front fold. So, and then the cuticle is actually coming from in between that fold and the nail. And it's made to be like a stuffing in between the fold and the nail. But once it comes through that fold, once it passes the fold, it's not really necessary to be there anymore. And if we are uh, wearing nail polish, when you put nail polish on these cells here, it's not going to stick properly. So it's coming off, so now I'm going to neutralize it because I don't want to leave it on for too long because I don't want the product to damage my nail underneath. Because I think if you leave it for too long, oh, sorry, you can actually break the bonds between the, uh, the nail cells as well. The nail is much more dense, so it's not going to be affected so quickly. But, you know, you have to be careful. So why do I buff? Because you see me buff sometimes. Well, I'm going to tell you because unless when the cuticle is removed, there is still like just the surface is not perfectly smooth. And then the polish kind of flows in that area and it's just, it's uneven. So it's not that the nail is uneven. There's just maybe some cells of the cuticle that are left behind. So this is why I take the buffer block and then I just angle it like this very, very lightly. And I just smooth this area. 
See how lightly I'm doing this? Okay, so this one doesn't have any grit, so I'm going to show you. What some people do is they put pressure and they go like this over the nail. Well, that's going to definitely remove layers of the nail. So there is a big difference between applying like this much pressure. Okay, there's no grit here. This much pressure and this much pressure. So buffing and buffing, right? So you can do this like this. And I wouldn't be doing this if I wasn't wearing nail polish. So if there was no nail polish, who cares that there was a little cell, right, of the, of the cuticle left behind. Okay, so you know what? Um, I'm going to do a video next, but I'm going to have to record it because the quality of this is really bad. I have clear nails, but on one nail there's a white mark and the nail is weak and flexible. What could, be, uh, could this be and how do I fix it? Clear nails. Well, the nails are, yeah, they're semi-clear. They're kind of transparent. Um, but I don't know. It could be white mark. It could be sometimes fungal infection. Who knows? Like the superficial, white superficial um, fungal infection. But it, without seeing a picture, I can't. I I can't really um see it it could be something completely different because there are sometimes little white spots and they are due to a little bit of trauma sometimes underneath where the nail is forming and so there's nothing to worry about so it really depends i don't know okay guys so my mother used crisco vegetable oil on her cuticles back in a day it's so funny now thinking of that but it worked yeah because well not on her cuticles again it's i i, I know i'm such a pain to be correcting everyone, but I really, really want people to understand. And I know it's a, uh, you know, I even sometimes make that mistake because for the last, I don't know, 25 years, I call this a cuticle, right? Very vaguely, kind of. So for you are applying the Crisco oil on the skin around the nails and on the nails, but not, on, not really on a cuticle because why would you want to care for your cuticle that you just now removed, right? Um, your nails are nice. Are you going to grow them a bit or keep them short? No, short. I do a lot of pedicures and, you know, foot massage and things like that. So I need my nails short. And then typing on the computer, I just do not like long nails. Okay. So the rubber base gel, my thoughts, not a fan whatsoever. You know what? I've been reading so much about allergic reactions lately and the implications of the allergic reactions to, to gel products. Mm, no, I would rather have natural nails and care for the natural nails. The problem is that people are getting really allergic to acrylates. So it's a family of products. So it's not necessarily like, yes, HEMA is getting a lot of bad rap now, but it's not that. It's lack of education and um, people are not using these products correctly. Very often they're not made by very reputable companies. It's, you know, it makes good money, so people just don't care. But once you get allergic to acrylates, very often that can be problematic, even when it comes to like dental um, fillings, crowns, things like that, even like the cement that's used in bone replacements or like, sur like when they do knee replacement surgeries. So, um, you know, I, I'm being more and more careful. In fact, I actually had a client um, who lives in Barcelona and she comes here once in a blue moon. And she just messaged me uh, if I could do her nails. And I asked her if she has polish on her nails, just remove it. Because I like to see, if I don't know, if I haven't seen someone in a long time, I would like to see them without nail polish so I can see what's going on with your nails. Because sometimes we can discover like a fungal infection or a bacterial infection on the nails. And if that happens, then I can't be servicing them, right? So anyway, so she said, oh, she can't remove it because she has gel polish on her nails. and. Her words, not mine, but she's like, yeah, some cheap Chinese shellac knockoff or something. And I'm like, I kind of thought about it and I'm like, made up my mind. I'm like, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not even removing these products anymore. After reading as much as I've been reading, gloves are not helping. Very often our hands are sweating in gloves, which actually makes the skin more susceptible uh, to all these acrylates. And I, if, if I didn't apply the product, because I know how I apply it, I know how I cure it, I'm not removing it. And I know a lot of people do and they think it's fine, but I don't, I don't want to risk it anymore. So, you know, it's really, it's really, really getting bad. So 
Uh, I'm from Philippines. I'm working in a salon and I'm new. Do you have any advice on how to do manicures and pedicure without shaking my hand and not worried? Okay, it's just practice. It's just practice and also uh, holding your, embracing your finger, right? So if you're working on this hand like this, putting, keeping the tool closer because very often people hold it like this and they kind of think that, you know, and then your hand shakes. So put the pinky um, on the, actually when you're holding the client's hands, you're gonna be holding on, on your hand and then holding the tool closer and you're much closer. And then doing something on your regular basis, just do everybody's nails that you know. Your husband, your husband's family, everybody. So the more practice you have, the more confident you're gonna get and the more you need to, your hands are like, they have to be exercised. Honestly, it's like playing piano because people say, oh, I can't reach like this. No, you totally can. It's just that you need practice. So you need to practice every day as much as you can in order to get confident. Uh, when do you recommend using the OPI nail repair? This one, I just used it at the beginning of the video so you can kind of go back. I, I really like the product. I have to say I, I like the product. I would use it once a week on bare nails or if your nails initially, you ha if you haven't used it, just use it for a week, twice a day. And it repairs, apparently it repairs the bonds between the keratin fibers. So it doesn't make more bonds because then it would be a hardener, but it repairs the broken bonds in the nail. So it's it's pretty good. But of course, it's not going to, let's say, if your nails are over filed, it's not going to regrow the nail. It's just going to repair the bonds in the area that you just have left behind. So not going to fix your nails, but it's going to help for sure. Okay, guys, if you have any more questions, uh, we have the Q&A this evening at 7 p.m. our time. So it's going to be 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Uh, like New York time. So if you could join us, that would be absolutely awesome. And I have to film this video, and um, and then I'll see you later, guys. Thank you so much. Bye.